Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Physiosaurus. In this video I am going to talk about the anterior cruciate ligament. ACL ligament is one of the most important ligament in the knee joint. Okay. I think this is my seventh video on the knee complex. If you can't find the video in order, you can directly just search for it in my biomechanics playlist. I have arranged the video in the order so that you could watch it one by one. Okay. So this is, I think the seventh video on the knee complex in the previous video, we were talking about the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament. Okay. So this is just a continuation in this video. I'll talk about the ACL ligament. In, since this is one of the most important ligament and the injury of the ACL ligament is very, very common in the sports person. Okay. So this is why I will also discuss the injury of the ACL ligament in the upcoming videos. So please watch this video till the end because in this video, I'll cover all the basic parts related to the ACL ligament. All right. Now let's start the video. ACL attachments will deal about it first. So it is attached to the anterior tibial spine. So it is basically attached to the anterior part of tibial spine. If you look at this diagram, you will get to know, uh, know what is tibial spine and where it is located in the tibia bone. As you can see here, these are the two eminence of the tibia, which is known as tibial spine. All right. Now it is attached to the anterior tibial spine and then it extends superiorly and posteriorly. Please keep these two words in mind and I'm going to show you a different diagram. Now watch this diagram very closely. All right. This one, the yellow one, which you are seeing here, the yellow one is your anterior cruciate ligament. All right. And this blue one is your posterior cruciate ligament. You need to understand since this is the posterior view of the knee joint. So the anterior tibial spine won't be visible. All right. But the anterior tibial spine would be somewhat here only. This one would be your anterior tibial spine. Now what's happening here is after attaching to the anterior tibial spine, which is here, this huge circle, it goes superiorly. As you can see here, the ligament is going superiorly and it goes posteriorly. As you can see here in the anterior side, there is PCL ligament. This one is your PCL ligament and just behind it, there is ACL ligament. So this is why after attaching to the anterior tibial spine, it goes posteriorly and it goes superiorly. Now let's read the next line to attach the posteromedial aspect of the lateral femoral condyle. So where it attaches, it attaches to the lateral femoral condyle, which part of lateral femoral condyle posteromedial part of the lateral femoral condyle. Look at this uh, diagram again. I'll erase some part of it. Now this one here is your lateral condyle and this would be your medial side of the lateral condyle. Okay. So ACL is attaching to the medial posterior aspect of the lateral femoral condyle. Okay. I think the attachment part is clear up to now. Now the ACL has two bands. Okay. It is made up of two bands, anteromedial band in short form, we will call it AMB and the posterolateral band, which in short, I'll be calling as PLB. Okay. We will talk about the significance of these two bands later on, but please keep in mind that ACL has two bands. All right. Now let's talk about the blood supply. So the blood supply of the ACL ligament is through the middle genicular artery, which is the branch of the popliteal artery. Now let's talk about the function of the ACL ligament. Okay. So the first function of ACL ligament is it resists anterior translation of tibia on femur. Okay. Now when the knee is in full extension, let's say, or imagine that your knee is in full extension. Okay. At that time, the posterolateral band or the PLB band is tight or taut. Okay. But when the knee flexion increases, the PLB loses and the AMB becomes taut. All right. So simply understand this, that in full extension, your PLB is tight and in knee flexion, your AMB is tight. All right. So 
just right now we were talking about that uh, what were the significance of these two bands now you have an idea of what these two bands do all right so the next term is there is no anterior translation of tibia possible in full extension because all the supporting structures are taught in full extension including the plb okay which is the posterior lateral band now at 30 degree knee flexion what's happening here is there is maximum translation of tibia on the femur because amb band and the plb band they both are lax okay so you need to keep this in mind that in full extension plb is taught in knee flexion amb is taught but at 30 degree flexion they both show laxity all right now the next function is it prevents the valgus or the varus stress okay during the abduction or the adduction of the tibia now the next term is it prevents the hyper extension of the knee all right the next one or the next function is of very little significance but still the amb band of the acl ligament it prevents the medial rotation of tibia up to 10 to 15 degrees because it becomes tighter with medial rotation all right the next point or the next heading is your mechanism of acl injury before i start this let me clear one thing that mechanism of injury is actually divided into two scenarios there is non contact injury and there is contact injury okay and this mechanism of acl injury is very very important but the thing is in this video i am dealing knee complex okay so mechanism of injury i'll talk in regarding to the biomechanics all right but in the upcoming video when i will upload this video separately on the acl injury in that i will talk about the non contact injury and the contact injury in detail but in this video i am just giving you an overview of the mechanism of injury with relation to the biomechanics all right now let's talk about the mechanism of injury so the mechanism of injury of the acl ligament is your knee is flexed with rotation in the either direction it could be in the medial rotation or it could be the lateral rotation of the tibia most important of it the most important in this is that it should happen in the weight bearing position okay so the mechanism of acl injury is flexed knee with rotation in the either direction medial rotation or the lateral rotation in weight bearing position now let's see what happens when there is medial rotation so during the medial rotation acl ligament is tensed because it is winded up around the pcl ligament all right and during the lateral rotation acl ligament is tensed because it is stretches over the lateral condyle of the femur okay so in both of the cases there is tension on the acl ligament the next heading is muscles around the knee joint which induces the stress or the relieve the stress in the anterior cruciate ligament so there are two muscles which relieve the stress by preventing the anterior translation and there are again two muscles which produces the stress in the acl ligament okay by causing the anterior translation so muscles which relieve the stress in the acl are hamstring muscles and your soleus muscle okay and then there are two muscles again gastrocnemius and the quadriceps which produces the stress in the acl ligament all right now here is a diagram which i have added okay here as you can clearly see this one here the forward movement is your anterior translation and the backward movement of the tibia is your posterior translation here is your hamstring muscles and when hamstring muscles contract there is posterior translation of the tibia which will reduce the stress on the anterior collateral ligament but when the quadriceps muscle will actually contract then it will lead to anterior translation of the tibia the tibia will translate anteriorly okay and when the tibia will translate anteriorly that will cause the stress on the acl ligament all right now the next heading is effect of co contraction of muscles around the knee joint on acl so till now we were 
studying about the muscles only single group of muscles which were uh, responsible for relieving the stress or producing the stress on the acl now we are talking about more than one muscles okay so let's say that the hamstring and the quadriceps they both contract at the same time so what will happen at the same time at that time the hamstring will counter the anterior translatory effect of quadriceps and that will reduce the strain on the acl please keep this in mind because in the end of this video i'll talk about the exercise protocol also okay so please keep this in mind this one is your very very important point now the next point is let's say that the gastrocnemius and the quadriceps contraction occurs at the same time so that will result in more greater strain on the acl there would be more strain on the acl because these both muscles they produces the as you can see here they produces the stress the the both muscles are the producer of the stress on the acl ligament all right so when gastrocnemius and the quadriceps muscles they both contract that will lead to the greater strain on the acl ligament unless and until hamstring muscle also contracts okay so when the hamstring muscle will also contract with then it will oppose the strain okay so that this was all about the effect of the co contraction of the muscles in short note i have added one more point here that the co contraction will reduce the anterior shear force on the tibia and that will lead to reducing uh, reduction of the stress of the on the acl all right so co contraction will basically reduce the stress on the acl ligament but it increases the joint compressive load i'm repeating it again co contraction of the muscles reduces the anterior shear force which will reduce the anterior translation of the tibia okay but in the meanwhile it also increases the joint compressive loads all right now i'm talking about the exercise protocol there are two things that you should keep in mind okay so the kind of exercises that are given to acl injury patients are i will talk about it in detail in the upcoming video but uh, there are there, there were case studies given in the nokins which i am dealing it right now okay so there are two things that you should keep in mind first one is hamstring dominating exercises are given throughout the range of motion of knee why hamstring dominating exercise because hamstring muscles reduces the stress on the acl and the next thing is quadriceps exercises with flexed knee beyond 60 degrees now you must be wondering that the quadriceps are the producer of the stress on the acl then why quadriceps exercises are given but here is one more thing that i have added that it is given beyond 60 degrees now let's say that the knee is flexed beyond uh, 60 degrees all right so when the knee is flexed what's happening here is there is already uh, there is already the contraction of the hamstring muscle okay so hamstring muscle is all, uh, already contracting why because the knee is flexed beyond the 60 degrees and now you are giving the quadriceps exercises so here what's happening let's move on to this line okay which the line which i have said that it is very very important so what's ha what will happen when the hamstring and the quadriceps will contract that will allow the hamstring to counteract the anterior translatory effect of the quad quadriceps and that will reduce the strain on the acl so now i am think i am making some sort of point here okay so there are two things that you should keep in mind hamstring dominating exercises are given throughout the range of motion of knee and quadriceps exercises are given with flexed knee beyond 60 degrees please note this down so this protocol will reduce the acl strain all right so this diagram which i have added here uh, this diagram is the as you can see here this arrow this arrow shows your proximal tibial anterior shear force so in this way there is anterior shear force this is the direction of the anterior shear force and ultimately that will lead to the anterior translation of the tibia okay anterior translation of the tibia and when this same force occurs in this po uh, posterior direction th that will lead to the posterior translation of the tibia so that's it this was all about the acl uh, ligament i hope that you like this video 
keep reading the synthia norkins and if you have any doubts related to it the comment section is always free to use okay so thank you so much for watching this video